So the, the theme of this session is about engagement. So we heard a little bit about how much engagement you get from in, in uh, video quizzes and the effects of that. And Eleanor O'Rourke is here from the University of Washington to talk to us about um, mapping the ground, ground growth mindset using brain points. And what are brain points, Eleanor? You're about to find out. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah, so today I'm going to be talking about um, my work on brain points, and I'm going to describe a new experiment um, that we've done that provides a deeper look at this uh, growth mindset incentive structure for an educational game. Um, so over the past few decades, technology has evolved to a point where there's really great potential for educational systems to improve student learning. And one of the most um, exciting advances is the ability to reach massive numbers of students uh, through online educational tools. But one of the biggest challenges that's currently facing learning at scale is student retention. Um, so we all know that MOOCs have really low completion rates. And of course, part of this is that students are enrolling in these courses with many different goals, and many of them may not ever intend to finish the course. Um, but it's also true that retaining uh, learners online <coughs> is challenging, and it requires focusing on engagement and motivation. Um, so as a result, there's been a lot of interest in using video games to create engaging learning experiences online. Um, because games are really famous for their ability to motivate players to perform complex and time-consuming tasks. And one aspect of games that's gotten uh, particular attention is their incentive structures. Um, so incentive structures are systems of coins or points or achievements that are used to reward players during the game. Um, and there's been a lot of buzz around incentives for education, and this entire field of gamification has developed to study how incentives can be integrated into different types of learning environments to um, motivate students. But while there's been a lot of work on educational games and gamification, um, studies show that these approaches are not always equally effective. And as a community, we don't have a great understanding of how incentives impact student learning and student motivation. Uh, but researchers in educational psychology have been studying these questions for decades. Um, and in fact, their research shows that some types of incentives could actually harm student learning by rewarding the wrong types of behaviors. Um, so Carol Dweck is a psychology professor at Stanford who studied motivation for her entire career. Um, and she kind of shocked the education community by showing that the way students think about their own intelligence um, has a strong impact on their academic achievement and their motivation. Um, so Dweck has shown that uh, students who have, or children who have what's known as a fixed mindset, um, believe that they are born with a certain amount of intelligence and that this is not something that they can change. Um, so they see challenges and mistakes as indications that they're not smart. But in contrast, uh, children with what's called a growth mindset uh, think that their intelligence is malleable and that they can grow their intelligence through effort and hard work. So they see challenges as opportunities to learn and they see mistakes as a natural part of this learning process. Um, so Dweck has shown that students' mindsets can be measured through surveys and that these mindsets actually predict students' ac achieve, uh, academic achievement over the challenging years of middle school. Um, but she's also shown that mindsets can be changed. So in particular, the praise that we give to students can influence which mindsets they develop. Um, so if we tell children that they succeeded because they, they're smart, um, in the future if they fail, they're going to think it's because they're not smart. Uh, whereas if we praise students for their effort, they're going to learn that their process is what matters rather than innate intelligence. Um, so let's think about this in the context of incentives. Um, incentives are really similar to praise in many ways uh, because they show players what types of behaviors are valued and rewarded within the game structure. Um, but a lot of incentives reward players for performing well or for getting through levels as quickly as possible. Um, they don't often reward players for their process, their effort, their use of strategy. Um, so a couple of years ago, I partnered with Carol Dweck to investigate whether we can redesign incentive structures for educational games um, that specifically encourage the growth mindset. And our initial work um, in this area, which we published in CHI 2014, uh, shows that incentives can promote growth mindset behaviors, um, such as persistence and strategy use. Um, so I'm going to give you a brief overview of the work from CHI 2014 to give you a little bit of context, and then I'm going to show how this original study leaves a number of questions about the uh, intervention design unanswered. Um, so I'm going to describe our new study, which explores these questions in more detail. Um, so we conducted this work with an educational game that's called Refraction uh, that was developed by my colleagues at the Center for Game Science at the University of Washington. Um, and the game teaches fraction concepts to elementary school students. Um, so the goal of the game is to split this laser into fractional values uh, using the pieces to the right to satisfy all of the target spaceships at the same time. 
Um, and her fraction has been played over a million times on the educational uh, website BrainPop and has won many awards. So our growth mindset version of this game has three main parts. Um, first, it has an introductory animation that teaches uh, the growth mindset through a narrative dialogue. It also has the brain points incentive structure. And finally, a summary screen that displays a visualization of students' progress um, as they're going through the game. So I'm going to walk through each of these parts briefly. Um, so this is the introductory animation that we show at the beginning of the game. And it introduces this idea that intelligence is malleable through an accessible dialogue uh, that's based on some of Dweck's original growth mindset interventions. And then the animation also introduces uh, the idea of brain points, the incentive structure that we came up with to reward effort. So brain points are given to players as they're working through levels when they exhibit behaviors that are associated with the growth mindset, um, such as effort, use of strategy, and productive struggle. And we came up with four different uh, metrics, heuristics, to capture these growth mindset behaviors, and I'm going to talk through each of these. Um, so the first metric captures when a student tries a new two-move hypothesis in the game, um, which we in in involves pl uh, placing two pieces in new locations on the board that they haven't tried before. Um, we call this a new idea. Um, another strategic behavior that we saw students using when they're stuck is to clear the board by moving all of the pieces back to the starting bin to look at the problem from a fresh perspective. So we call this fresh start. Uh, making the correct fraction for the first time, in other words, making a, a fraction value that matches the one on the target spaceship is kind of like solving a subproblem in the game, so we call this math effort. Um, and then finally, being persistent and sticking with the problem is another growth mindset behavior, uh, which we define as 10 distinct new moves in a level. And we call this working hard. Um, so these four metrics capture behaviors that are associated with effort and strategy use in refraction. Um, but during my iterative design process, I very quickly discovered that if I rewarded these behaviors every single time, uh, students really quickly learned how to game the system and just repeated those behaviors over and over and over again. Um, so how can we keep players from gaming the system while still encouraging these desirable behaviors? Um, the solution that we came up with was to require students to trigger two different metrics before they could earn points. Um, so this means that students can't just repeat the last moves they did, they have to try two different strategies in order to be rewarded. Um, so for example, here the player is trying a new idea and then placing all the pieces back in a starting bin which earns fresh start points. And then here the player makes the correct fraction for the first time and tries another new idea which earns new idea points. And we're choosing the message associated with the last metric fire to display on the points. Um, at the end of each level we display a screen that shows the player's progress, so it shows the number of points they earn on this level. Um, and players move up this mountain for every point they earn. Um, and then they advance to a new refraction planet every time they get to the top of the mountain. Um, and since points are given out for effort, children are advancing to the next stage in the game uh, based on how hard they're struggling, how hard they're working, rather than based on their raw performance in the game. Um, so our approach in this research has been to study the brain points intervention by releasing experiments on the educational website BrainPop. Um, so this website is a really valuable resource because it gives us access to a large, uh, diverse population of students who visit this website during school. Um, the students who play Refraction on BrainPop don't know that they're part of an experiment, so our findings reflect their natural behavior. Uh, but one downside is that we're not able to directly measure uh, learning through pre and post tests because giving students any type of questionnaire or test in this environment causes them to quit immediately. Um, so <laughs> instead, <laughs> Um, instead, we look at how the intervention affects observable in-game behaviors, um, like persistence and use of strategy. Um, and it's also important to note that many of the effects that we measure in this environment are relatively small. Um, but even these small effects show that the behavioral patterns that we're measuring um, persist despite really large variations in the context in which students are coming to play the game on BrainPop. Um, so we capture a couple of different outcome measures in these experiments. Um, first, we look at how long students persist in the game by measuring the number of seconds that each student spends actively engaged. Um, we also look at the number of levels that they play during that time. And then finally, to capture strategy use during gameplay, we measure how often students trigger those four different brain points metrics that I just described, uh, per minute on average. So the goal of the initial experiment that we published at CHI was to see if growth mindset incentives are more effective than traditional ones. Um, so to answer this question, we designed an experiment that compared brain points to a control condition with level points. 
Um, so in this control, players get five level points for each level that they completed. Uh, so their performance was rewarded rather than their effort. Um, and this was a randomized A-B study with a total of 15,000 participants. Um, so the results of this initial study uh, showed that students in the brain points condition played significantly longer um, and also played significantly more levels than those in the control condition. Um, and you'll note here that students are playing for a very short time, about a median of two minutes. Um, but, but this is because, as with many other online websites, you're getting this sharp uh, drop-off curve where many students are quitting very quickly. Um, but even despite this short overall period of play uh, the, and the diversity of contexts in which students are coming to this website, um, this brain points intervention is encouraging students to persist for more time. Um, we also found that students in the brain points condition exhibit significantly more growth mindset behaviors um, during play. Uh, so this shows that the brain points are actually encouraging the behaviors that they're incentivizing even over this short period of time. Um, so overall, this first study shows that the intervention has a positive impact on student behavior, encouraging both persistence and growth mindset behaviors. Um, so while these results are encouraging, uh, the original experiment doesn't provide much insight into why this intervention actually works. Uh, in particular, it's not at all clear what part of the design, the narrative, the brain points, the progress visualization, um, is having the strongest impact on student behavior. And in order to start generalizing this approach and transferring growth mindset in incentives to other uh, learning environments, it would, be really it would be really valuable to have a better understanding of which components are most important um, to the design. So in the current work, uh, we study this question directly. We designed an experiment that compares the original brain points condition um, to four different modified versions of the intervention. Um, so each modified version either removes or changes one component of the original intervention to answer a specific research question. Um, in, our, in our analysis, uh, we compare the original condition to each modified version to measure the impact of that modification. Um, so again, this was a randomized A-B study where students were random, or players were randomly assigned to one of the five conditions. Um, and we collected data from 25,000 participants, so 5,000 per condition. Um, so the first question that we wanted to answer is whether the growth mindset narrative that we presented through the introductory animation actually matters. Uh, and we hypothesized that this narrative would make an important contribution to the intervention, uh, increasing both persistence and growth mindset behavior. So to answer this question, we created a modified version of the intervention uh, that did not show the growth mindset animation at the beginning of the game. So in this version, players were just immediately dropped into the first level, um, but otherwise the game was identical. So they still earned brain points, they still saw the progress visualization at the end of each level. Um, so we when we compared this modified version to the original intervention, we found that our hypothesis was completely incorrect. <laughs> um, so students who didn't see the narrative animation played significantly longer. Um, <laughs> they played more, significantly more levels, although the median is four in both cases. Um, and they also exhibited more growth mindset behaviors during play. <laughs> um, so these results completely surprised us uh, because previous growth mindset interventions with very similar narratives have been successful. Um, but this is the first time that anyone has tried to teach the growth mindset through a game, and previous game research shows that players really hate any tutorials that interrupt gameplay. Um, so this made us wonder if a large number of players are just quitting uh, during the animation, which leads to a lo lower overall uh, persistence in the game. So to explore this question, uh, we ran a follow-up analysis where we only included players in both conditions who finished the first level of the game. So they got through the animation and actually tried playing the game. Um, and this analysis does tell a different story. Uh, so we found no significant difference in the amount of time played, um, no difference in the number of levels played, and no difference in average growth mindset behaviors per minute. Um, so this analysis suggests that the narrative animation is causing some players to quit the game, which reduces this overall engagement. Um, but the animations don't have a negative impact on the players who do stick with the game, although it also doesn't have a positive impact. Um, so overall, the, the growth mindset narrative harms persistence and doesn't provide any added benefit um, in the game. Um, the next question that we wanted to answer is whether the brain points matter. Um, and we hypothesized that the brain points would increase both persistence and growth mindset behaviors. Um, but since this is the first intervention that's tried to teach the growth mindset through an uh, incentive structure, we wanted to confirm that uh, the points do actually have the effect that we're expecting. Um, so to answer this question, we designed another modified version of the game that didn't have any points. Um, so we removed all references to points in the introductory animation, um, and then players didn't earn any points while they were playing, and then 
the progress visualization at the end is completely dependent on points. Um, so instead, we use this neutral dialog block at the end of each level, so they didn't see you know, that visualization of the mountain. Um, so when we compared this modified version to the original intervention, uh, we found that players without points did play for less time, which is what we expected. Um, however, we found there was no significant difference in the number of levels played, um, and that players without points actually exhibited more growth mindset behaviors. Um, <laughs> So there are a couple different ways that we can interpret these results. Um, it is possible that the no points version of the game is in some way doing a better job of encouraging growth mindset behaviors. Um, but the analysis also shows that the children in the no points condition are um, completing the same number of levels in less time on average. Um, so this indicates that the players who choose to stay in the game in this condition might be more skilled at the game. Um, so it seems more likely that the struggling players are quitting in the no points condition and that the overall population in um, the no points condition is more skilled in using more strategy. Uh, but this is a hypothesis that we can't confirm without more research, so this needs a little bit more investigation. Um, but in any case, we can conclude that the brain points are increasing overall persistence in the game. Um, and we had another question about the brain points design. Um, so we realized that it's possible that students are more persistent when they have brain points just because they like earning points as they're playing rather than earning them at the end of each level, which is what we did in the original control condition. Um, so we wanted to measure whether rewarding these specific growth mindset behaviors actually matters. Um, and we hypothesized that re rewarding these behaviors is important and this, that this is contributing to the observed effects on both persistence and strategy use. Um, so to answer this question, we designed another modified version of the intervention that awarded brain points randomly. Um, so in this version, the random points were given out at the same overall rate as the brain points, but they weren't tied to any specific behaviors in the game. Um, but otherwise, this version was exactly the same as the original. Um, so when we compared this modified version to the original intervention, um, our hypothesis was confirmed. Um, so players with random points played for significantly less time, they played significantly fewer levels, and they also used significantly fewer growth mindset behaviors. Um, so these findings show that randomly praising students for their effort is not uh, effective. Um, at promoting the growth mindset. Brain points are successful specifically because they're rewarding students for their productive struggle and strategies in the game. Now, the final question that we wanted to answer is whether this progress visualization that we show at the end of each level actually matters. Um, and we hypothesized that this visualization would contribute to player engagement so that it would have an impact on overall persistence. Um, but it is possible that the visualization in this mountain metaphor showing their progress might be too abstract to have a strong impact on children. So we wanted to confirm this. Um, so to answer this question, we designed another modified version um, that used a summary screen that didn't have the mountain visualization. So it just showed how many points you got, and it had this neutral image of a character or a spaceship. Um, so when we compared this modified version to the original, our hypothesis was confirmed. Um, we found that players who saw the progress visualization played for significantly longer, um, and they also played significantly more levels. Uh, but then, as expected, the visualization didn't have a significant impact on the number of growth mindset behaviors uh, that students were using during gameplay. Um, so these results show that showing players their progress increases overall retention in this intervention. Um, so to summarize these findings, um, in this study, we discovered that the growth mindset animations actually harm student retention and don't provide any added benefit uh, to the students who stick with the game. So this suggests that the animation, uh, that using animations might not be the best way to teach students uh, in educational game settings. Um, we also found that brain points increase student retention um, and that randomly rewarding players is not effective. Um, brain points are working specifically because they're rewarding these growth mindset behaviors. Um, and finally, we found that the progress visualization increases player retention which suggests that exposing uh, students to their own progress data could be an effective way of motivating students online. Um, so these findings provide a much deeper understanding of why the original brain points intervention was effective and which components were most important. Um, so we hope that this understanding will help us effectively transfer this design to other learning environments in the future, uh, both educational games and more formal learning contexts. Um, and more generally, I want to point out that these results display the importance of designing experiments that can tease apart the relative impacts of different uh, components of educational interventions. Um, so I think large-scale online learning environments provide us with this really unique opportunity uh, to systematically study the design of educational interventions and optimize this intervention design um, through data-driven approaches. Um, so we hope this type of experimentation will contribute to a deeper understanding of educational intervention design in the future. Thank you. Yeah.
walk back to this corner here. Hi. Hi. Um, great talk. Thank you. My name is uh, Rika Antonova, and I'm from Carnegie Mellon University. I have a question. So it was intuitively um, OK to see that comparing to random rewards, um, there was a difference, and your hypothesis was confirmed. But what about comparing with rewards for achievement? So that doesn't necessarily it's not necessarily about the growth, mm -hmm. it is about the result, and so both kinds of uh, players would be able to be motivated by this, and so I was wondering if you looked into this or are planning to look into this. So the original um, experiment in CHI 2014 was comparing to performance-based rewards, so it was, you got points for each level you completed, so it was all about how well you were doing in the game. It'd be interesting to combine the two. Um, I, I, maybe that was what you're suggesting. I, I don't know if that would end up providing a stronger effect. One thing to note is that there are some not point-based but other rewards in finishing a level. So there's this really cute animation at the end and kids really love that. So they, there is still this desire to beat levels because they want to see that. Um, so I think there is some kind of benefit to beating levels still, but I think, yeah, it would be really interesting to look at the interaction between those types of incentives. Yeah, that's a great question. Hi, I'm Joseph J. Williams from Harvard's research group. Um, this was a fantastic talk, like having followed the growth mindset literature, you just gave a great example of how to hammer in and hit on the underlying mechanisms. And you made a really good point that when we understand it, we can generalize it. Mm -hmm. So you had me start to think, well, how do you try and map over some of this to a MOOC setting where you have this nice common structure, everyone's doing videos or problems. So mm -hmm. do we want to reward people for second attempts? Do we want to actually ask them to track to what extent using good strategies like spacing or yeah. retrieving, you know, testing yourself. So I'd, I'd love to hear. And yeah. visualization, maybe that's actually a key thing because that's something that's easy to track. I think yeah. Zach Pardus and others have been doing, and, and at Harvard and MIT, work where you could pull in data and just say, here's what you did so far. Yeah, no, that's a great question. It's something I've been thinking about a lot. Um, so one thing that we've noticed is that you really have to be able to collect pretty fine-grained information about how students are approaching problems in order to do this correctly. Um, so we, we tried to integrate this idea into, um, my advisor, Zoran Popovich, um, has a nonprofit company that has some tablet-based software. And they were at the kind of early stages of development on that and only had correctness information for problems. And that is not enough information to, to do brain points. So it really has to be focusing on your process approaching that. Um, so I think you know, the direction that I'm really interested in moving is how can we design interfaces that students can work through learning tasks online that actually collect process information, and that is what we need to reward this. Um, but I think, you know, large-scale data and also exposing that is interesting as well. So, yeah, that's a great question. Um, hi, uh, my name is Xu Wang, and I'm from Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, I'm one, uh, yeah, first of all, this is a fascinating talk. And uh, I'm wondering, do you think the incentive mechanism uh, in this game is favoring those students who prefer to try things out first? Mm -hmm. So students may have different learning styles. Mm -hmm. Some may prefer to try things out. Some may prefer to plan first and then like make a move. Um, do you think this will be favoring those who like will prefer to do experiments first? Yeah. And also you used um, the time uh, they stayed in the game as a measure. Mm -hmm. Do you think it could be because like they are doing doing a lot of experiments so that they stay longer, not because like the um, the incentives motivate them to stay longer. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so in terms of the experiment, whether it favors students who e experiment more, um, that was something that we played around with a lot when we were first designing. Some of the original designs only rewarded those who were struggling and didn't reward those who were moving through. And we do have an adaptive level progression um, in the game, but it's not great enough to really be able to get students to their perfect level of difficulty. Um, so what we ended up doing is basically if you just get the correct solution, you also get points. Just because making the correct fraction is a growth mindset behavior, you know, one of our metrics, and trying a two-move hypothesis is so you, you basically always end up, if you just go straight to the level solution, you plan it out and then you do it, you end up getting some points. Um, so it is kind of reward and goal. So I don't think, I would be very surprised if the students who are doing well or not experimenting with this just to achieve them. So that is a good question. Yeah. Hi, uh, Corinne Ostro. I'm from Worcester Polytechnic Institute. 
Um, so we've tried to do some mindset research uh, in the context of uh, an online learning environment, mm -hmm. more of an ITS situation that's less gamified. Um, we kind of actually got it thinking that uh, it was more important to present the, the training, the upfront kind of growth mindset intervention training, mm -hmm. uh, rather than providing the, the kind of uh, smaller praise messages. And so I'm wondering, um, w how exactly were the, the brain point elements, those four elements, really uh, deeply connected to more of the mindset vibe, or mm -hmm. were students just kind of being taught to realign to proper learning goals? So, yeah, so how much question. of it is the mindset, and how much of it is, uh, are we just actually now yeah. classically conditioning students to learn, right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, so, I mean, I worked closely with Carol Dweck to kind of iteratively, iteratively design these heuristics. Um, but the, so I haven't published this yet, but we are in the process of doing a longer term study on a different educational website where we can do pre and post tests. So we've done pre and post mindset surveys and have seen a significant increase in the mindset score after playing the game. Um, so that is an early indication to me that it is related. Um, but I, I, there's, I also don't know how much of what we're observing is because this is in the context of a game, um, right, where points are very expected and watching some long intervention up front is really not what people are expecting to do. Um, so it might be really different in a more for formal or ITS type environment where students are sitting down knowing they're getting into a, a very educational activity. Um, but that's a good question, yeah. Um, sorry, I think I've lost one. Yeah, yeah. Um, David Joyner, Udacity and Georgia Tech. Uh, I just wanted to ask real quick, um, do you have any studies planned, this is similar to that, but studies planned to see if improvements in mindsets that you see through this actually transfer to new activities where you're not still rewarding uh, growth mindset? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, that's something we definitely want to look at. We haven't uh, looked at it a far transfer yet. We do have um, challenge levels that we integrate into the game that don't, in which they're supposed to, they're designed to be really hard and they, students don't get points on those levels and we are seeing it transferring to that, um, but that's a very near transfer case. So I would be surprised if this just transfers to everything um, without a lot of more careful design around that. But that's <laughs> definitely a direction I want to push the work in the future. Yeah. Thank you very much. Please join me in thanking Eleanor.